hit it. Baby, one, two, three, four. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You are not rocking with the best. It's not some baby. One time, still shining. Respect my swag. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. And this is another episode. A swingers after dark. It's time to get live. And this is your host. Nah, son, baby, 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 baby. Let's go, chat. Microphone, chicka, chicka, chat, one, two, one, two. This is your host, Nah, son, baby, and this is another episode. Uh, swingers after dark, and I'm with Shay J. You know, she's the the owner of. The House of Cards. The House of Cards, straight out of VA, the land of lovers. You know, Richmond. She's not from Tide Water. You know, no, she's I'm from Tide Water. Oh, excuse me. So you were from the 757. I'm from the 75. Okay, okay. So you from the, the what? So you said the real Virginia? The real Virginia. Wait, how are you gonna how are you gonna live in Richmond and talk shit? I don't live in Richmond. Oh, my bad. You from Norfolk. I am from Norfolk. I live in Hampton. So that is tight water. You know, I'm fucking up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you know why I thought you lived in Richmond? It's because I always see you partying in Richmond. Well, you know, I be everywhere. Oh, okay. Okay. She's she, she's everywhere. So let, let me back up. She is from tight water. My bad. It's just that, you know, I always see her posting in Richmond, you know, but she's from the eight cities, right? Seven. Seven, seven. Listen, when I'm there, I, <laughs> listen, listen. When I'm there, I make it eight. Ow. So, you know, I, I, I love VA. I love VA because it, it seems like y'all throw parties every weekend. It's like every weekend I see you with a different like outfit at, at a different kickback at a different party. <laughs> and, and I'm like... How can I be down, down, down? There's just a there's a lot to do. There's there's a lot to do in the seven five. Um, people say it's boring here, but it's definitely what you make it. It, it may not be your Houston or your Miami or your Atlanta, but there's definitely a party scene out here, especially when it comes to the lifestyle. She, yeah, listen, listen, ain't nothing boring about VA. You feel me? Especially when you have all them cities. You got Portsmouth. You got Norfolk, you got Hampton, you got Suffolk. Yeah, you got Virginia Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I feel like I'm leaving out something. That's the peak. Yes, and you got bad news. And you got Newport News, yep. Yes, at least I know my shit. I'm not even reading from a script either. I know my <laughs> shit. I love that. You, you, you feel me? Uh, so, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Shay J, you know, she's a celebrity. She's just not famous. No. Listen, listen, listen. We don't do humble on the show. Only slaves are humble. You feel me? We don't do, talk your shit. It. Yes, I you gotta. It. Yeah, you you gotta talk your shit. What? No, 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 no. Listen, listen. listen. Don't don't be humble on my show because I be seeing you cutting up on Facebook talking about how people say they see you at parties and then they be in the inbox after the fact and then you have these thirsty mofos who try who try to touch. Without saying no, I see you, Shay J. I see you. They just don't know how to work their mojo. You Man, know? That is true, but I I like to think that's not a celebrity thing. That's honestly, I'm just the one that's speaking up about it. I think that's what it is. No, you you have a lot of, you know, icks. You know, you have a lot of fanatics on your page. They're intimidated by you because they see all that chocolate and they have a sweet tooth for their love. You feel me? And they don't know. They don't know how to. You know. Well, that is true. I, I I have come across people who don't know if they fuck with me or if they want to fuck on me. They really don't know. And, and, and it's a complex. And, and you know why I fuck with Shay J? She loves to get fucked raw. You feel me? Just like me, we both like raw sex, so we get we got both of that in common. <laughs> oh baby, I like it raw. Yeah, baby, I like it raw. Oh, oh, wait, wait, time out. Ladies and gentlemen, let me back up. She only fucks people raw, her and I, who we're comfortable with, not on the lamb, not on GP. Let, let me let me get that right. But I say that because you talked about fucking raw, like anybody who you're rawing. 
you know no oh, no 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 there so there was a guy that was fucking me and he was not fucking me wrong and he what he said was i bet whoever is fucking you wrong is in love with you and yes there is a special person um special you know couple people who are not a part of the lifestyle um you know my favorites that maybe some people may get to know maybe not um those are the ones i'm fucking wrong if that's not you and you know it's not you oh it's not me I'm, no I'm, not but, you i'm just saying your view you know in yeah, your life l- listen if you I'm, know I'm, that's I'm, not you then don't come over here to myself i ain't got none okay well guess what <laughs> listen listen i'm like shaggy it wasn't me but she got me on the counter wasn't me saw me banging on the sofa it wasn't me i even had her in the shower wasn't me she even caught me on camera wasn't me you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i'm like shaggy but you know all jokes aside you know listen skins are a man's best friend fuck them dogs yeah. i do like skins skins you, you, are perfect you, you know what's crazy? I didn't. I used to use magnums a lot, but it, it seems like all of a sudden, a lot of women say that they're allergic to latex. I'm like, after all these fucking years of fucking with latex condoms, now y'all want to say this? But well, I, just, I don't. You know what? I have never had that problem, but I will say that latex wears out, and when it wears out, so does the lubrication, and that can kind of be irritating. So yeah. I think that's really the reason why women would rather, some women would rather say that they're allergic to it because they don't even want to deal with it. Um, it's very rare that I've had sex. I mean, it's very rare that I've had sex when I've dried up, when I've dried up period. But any times when that did happen, it was usually uh, a Trojan. Listen, she, she got the Atlantic Ocean down there. You feel me? That's why, you know, it's like a fucking whirlwind. It's like a hurricane. You know what I'm saying? Not, tropical, the geyser tropical. or the waterfall, if you will. It's oh, more she, of a geyser, though. Wow. L- listen, listen. I got to give you a round of applause for saying geyser. I haven't heard that word in years. <laughs> she said geyser. That oh, I, I fucks with you. I fucks with you by saying geyser. Oh, no, that, yes. that's, like a, that's like a science book reference. Have you, Ge- have, if you know what a geyser looks like, it's just this random shooting of water, you know? That's yeah. Listen, listen. I, I salute you for us. I haven't seen that word since I read a fucking science book in high school. You feel <laughs> me? So, but but yeah, it like and plus, you know, skins they don't live. They don't leave the after smell. They don't like leave that. the yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's that's why I, I love them skins. You feel me? So you know, I, I see I see you posting a lot about dudes. You know. They don't know how to keep their hands to themselves. So when you're at an LS event, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, you're not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it. You're you're very popular. You know, you, you're very well sought after. A lot of dudes and chicks wants themselves some Shay J. You feel me? Know. So how would you like a guy specifically? Did I say specifically? Specifically, uh-huh. my bad. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking like I'm talking I'm talking like I'm not educated. So how would you like a guy to specifically approach you without being, you know, overly thirsty or what 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 is it about it? This is a two-part question. How would you want a, a guy to approach you and what would entice you to play with a guy at a party? Um so when it comes to approaching me, like I'd rather you approach me like you want to like you want to get to know me because remember you don't you know you don't know me so approach me like have an open mind you know ask me how i'm doing um i'm, I'm not against talking to anyone but also don't assume that because i'm talking to you that i'm gonna fuck you because yeah i go to these parties and i love to have a good time but i'm not guaranteed to fuck anybody you know and my pussy is not up for promises i don't sign contracts so don't assume that even if you are nice to me, I'm going to fuck you. Uh, just be happy to get to know me. And I'm sure you'll see me again, you know? And, and, and fellas, just because you fuck her favorites raw, that doesn't mean that she's going to fuck you raw as well. So w- w- how I'm not. Listen, listen, I got to get that clear for the slow motherfuckers out there. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't, they don't know how to di- differentiate jokes and seriousness. 
You feel yeah. me? So I had to throw that out there. So what is it about a guy, even the first time, you know, mm -hmm. what what is it about a guy that you're gonna hop his bone, even on site or if you see him over time? What certain qualities or what catches your eye about a guy at an LS event? You know, that's such a that's such a broad question because there are so many different things depending on who you are. Um, number one, I need you to be attractive. Like, and I'll talk about this too. If you know that you're not the kind of person I would go after, tread lightly. Understand you're taking a big risk. How would you, how, that's why I'm asking, what is your type? My type is, you know, it's so funny though, because I, I swear I don't have a type of my friends say I do. Um, my type is brown. Um, as long as you're taller than me, I mean, I'm not really a height person, so that doesn't bother me. I'm five two and a half. Most people in the room are going to be taller than me. Anyway. Listen, listen, we don't do that half shit. You five three, goddammit. Anyway, keep going. Thank you, thank you. Because I thought you was going to say you you five two, but thank you for giving me that extra half. No, we, we listen. Listen, I'm a mathematician, goddamn it. Rerounding that we shit up. up. Thank we you. round up. So you five Thank three. You. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm only five three, so everyone in the room is usually what? taller than me. No, 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 no. <laughs> ain't listen, ain't no only five three. You five three because you, your your gait and your aura says that you're a giant. You and know yes. what? It's so funny you say that everyone that I meet that has like got in touch with my online presence when they finally do meet me they look oh shay i thought you was much taller and it's because i give off tall bitch energy yes and she's That's intimidating brutal. she's intimidating you know what i'm saying because anyway we're not gonna touch on that no pun intended but anyway um so keep <laughs> going about your type um my type is successful my type is able to command a room without having to do too much my type is usually not the loudest person in the room because in my opinion the loudest person in the room is normally the most fucked up person in the room um and when i when i say loud i don't mean outgoing i mean belligerent so, so that's well, gonna, that's not gonna get it for me um i don't like to be at parties where everyone is overly fucked up that's gonna be a turn off for me um my type is able to handle his drugs or liquor or whatever vice of his choice. Um, my type is also smart about his health. Hey, my, wait, type wait. Never, my type would never even ask me about fucking raw on the first time. <laughs> I guess that cancels me out. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 not I, I saw something recently on your page and yeah. we're not, we, we not gonna get this dude some light so what did this dude do to make you put him on blast and to for you to say if you fuck with this individual i'm not fucking with you so what did he do at a party that you know that made you want to you know regulate I don't even want to get into that. It's it's because it's quite a personal story and it's still mm. something I'm struggling with. But I will. Yo, okay, wait, wait, wait. Person. Wait, we don't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. We we don't have to touch on that specifically. But what are certain things that you dislike that that guys do at an LS party? Like this is an educational moment. You know, um, I talk. I, I talk my shit. They think like, that I, no means. They think that no means convince me. Or no means. Um, do what you want. I'm just not with it. And and unfortunately, like there are people in the lifestyle, just like there are people everywhere who don't know what no means for an answer. They don't know. But unfortunately, in the lifestyle, they use that guys as oh, you know, if we played once, then that means you're mine. That means whenever I see you, you should be ready to go. And unfortunately that person in question has a history of doing that. I just found out he was another he was at another party somewhere else doing the same thing. Um so the people I'm talking about, it's not a one off situation. There are of course misunderstandings, you know, especially when there's alcohol and drugs involved. But there's a difference between you having a misjudgment in character one night and that being part of just your character. That's basically who you are. Listen, um, as as I've gotten older 
Like, I don't even find women who are inebriated attractive. Like, I stay away from you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and another thing, if if a woman doesn't tell me yes. Then she's then, telling you no. Yes. If, if she say maybe soon, no. if, I take maybe soon as no. If she says maybe later soon, I'm good. That's a no. You know what I'm saying? Because until it's so she, many. Until she comes up to you with something different. What you say? Um, until she comes up to you with something different. If she does. And, and, and that's the thing because there's been times where you know women they did not want to play with me at one party and then at another party they say yo what's up and that's <laughs> happening like i've definitely turned people down and the next time i saw them maybe i saw them a little different or men never underestimate the value of having a gdr a gdr is like a gold star in a lifestyle and like what's a that star. How can we get that? Yeah, that's a good dick rating. So, so y'all, y'all share like y'all references. Of course we do. I, I don't know because I'm 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 quiet. I'm not out and about like that. <coughs> Bullshit. But yeah, so I'm I was, just, <laughs> I was just wondering what what was was how how would you like a guy to put it down the hell that what what makes a good session? You oh know, oh. Mm. Because ladies and gentlemen, Shay J got some pretty toes. She got some pretty toes. She got some, you know, nice titties and some nice ass. Listen, she's fun size. You know, just because she's 5'3", that doesn't mean that she's not slacking in her macking. I'm definitely not slacking in the macking. Yeah, you know, she she got, you know. Listen, if you check out her, her Twitter and her OnlyFans, Shay J, you know, you will see what I'm talking about. But anyway, what is what is a bomb man session? That if you're a squirter, how can a guy make I you am. squirt? Yeah, so look, so break it down. Like, what is a good um, session to you? So for me, a good session is a session where somebody is very attentive to me. I'm I'm naturally an empath. I'm very empathetic. So. I'm paying attention to like your body language, if you're enjoying it or not. If I move this way, like what 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 happens? That's what I like. I wanna I want a, somebody who's willing to explore my body, even if we're playing for even if it's like a five minute thing, which usually it's not. But if it is, even if it was, I want you to take the time to explore my body. Don't assume that you know it, um, unless you do. If it works to where immediately I'm just like, oh my God, then do keep doing what you're doing. But if not, take the time to figure it out. Don't keep fucking through it if you know that I'm not giving you 100% feedback. I, I pride myself on my feedback. You're going to know if you're doing a good job or not when it comes to me. That's why people um, got to, that's why, you know, they got to pay attention to her reactions and how she breathes. Pay attention. Pay attention my voice will and, and i'm and i'm hyperactive so i'm super sensitive like my my voice will change i'll, I'll make a face oh my face is uh, she she, she was making the um the retarded the retarded faces you know what i'm saying like she like you know like her face is deformed or something you know very much very much so like her cheekbones and her you know they got like a mind of his own you know they like they do stuff. yeah the let's be twi- the the eyes be twitching you know like they go like this yeah that she be cross-eyed <laughs> you, you, thought, you thought she was cockeyed no pun intended you know what i'm saying so <laughs> that's what i'm saying so how long how you been in the ls so um you know, that's an interesting question. I never really know how to answer that one because before I joined the LS party scene, I was um, poly. I was already, you know, I was more of a casual lover when I wasn't in committed relationships. Um, but when it comes to the party scene, it's I'm, I'm still a baby in this. I'm still a newborn, to be quite honest. Um, I went to my first lifestyle event last year, early 2022. Um, I started off working for this members only club who was, who would do BDSM events, um, which was an experience. 
So, you know, unfortunately, like most people, unlike most people, I started off making money in, in the lifestyle, um, which I don't suggest that be anyone's first experience. When you put sex and money together and you're green, don't know what's going on, it can be intimidating. Um, but after I got out of that situation, I went to, I found my first group who was LS friendly, um, was able to go to different events, meet people. And by the time I had left that group, I kind of had people checking for, you know, what I had going on. I decided to start my alternative page so that I could connect with more lifestyle people. And I realized that I had quite the following out of nowhere. People wanted to know what I was doing or where I was going or if they could come with me. Um, people that I thought were vanilla that I've known for years just came out of nowhere. Like, oh, take me with you, take me with you. Um, and that's kind of basically what started me really deciding to to get my feet planted firmly in this lifestyle and seek out uh, vets and mentors. It's crazy because we know the same people. And I'm like, where's she from? I'm like, where she come from? Right. Like, Everyone says that. Like, where was you at? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where she come from? You know what I'm saying? I, because my, my first lifestyle friendly group wasn't really lifestyle. Um, it was more people that kind of were in their own bubble, didn't really, you know, do much outreach, didn't really go to a lot of parties outside of their clique. So it wasn't until I left that group and I started going to bigger events that I realized like, okay, this is a whole world out here. That's mine for the taking. She, she's like, a whole new world. Literally, me, I, me, Ariel, like. A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. Hold your breath, it gets better. <laughs> listen, I'm Shabashin, goddammit. Anyway, <laughs> she's like a whole, because because I know about Virginia through Dynasty VIP and, okay. through, and through Purple Rain. You know, Purple okay. Rain, yeah, they 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 based out of Richmond. Not They do their stuff in New Jersey now, but I, I knew about VA through Purple Rain and through Dynasty VIP. They're based in Tidewater. But you, you do a lot of stuff in, in Richmond. You know, so what, like, is there like some animosity between Tidewater and Richmond? Because I, I find it funny. A lot of people in Richmond and Tidewater, y'all got this thing. Like back in Chicago, you know, we got this thing like North Side, South Side, West Side, East Side. You understand me? I'm from the North Side, so we get picked on by everybody. <laughs> you feel me? Because we seen as the bougie Negroes. So, yeah. so what is that? What is the thing between Richmond and Tidewater? You got me. I don't know that. I didn't know there was a thing between Richmond and Tidewater. Um, I see that. That's why I well, fuck with you because you, you, you don't engage with the fuckery. You know what I'm saying? That's because. I, um, I will say that a lot of the people that party up in Richmond are here. Most of us that go to Richmond come from the 757 or they come from um, like DC, Maryland. So. I feel like Richmond is, for a lot of us, that's just the, that's the nucleus. It's, I mean, it's, it's the capital. And, and I think it's also the capital for the lifestyle when it comes to, to Virginia. Listen, Everyone listen, listen. comes to Norfolk or Portsmouth, but people will go to Richmond. Listen, don't 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 be don't be diplomatic now because you're just like I'm from the real Virginia. So don't be diplomatic now. Talk your she is, she is. When I say that, I mean, so there's a part of Virginia that's like mm, right in the middle where people are from, but they're not there no more. Most of them aren't there no more. Those are the cities that you just, you know, zoom through on your way to somewhere else. It's, it's funny because they say that um, that West, that Western Virginia it's not even Virginia. It's West Virginia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So if you're not from the rich or from the 757 or even Nova. 757. Yeah, that's Norfolk. If you're not from and I'm from Norfolk, naughty, stand up. Um, if you're not from Norfolk, the 757 or the Richmond area, and there are like counties and towns outside of Richmond. But if you're not from that part of Virginia, it's kind of like, well, where are you from? Mm. 
How, how do you stay out, out of the drama in the LS? Because even though you're a newbie, I know you've seen your share of fuckery so far. So how do you stay out of the riffraff? I can't say that I do, to be quite honest. I'm just so aloof about things that don't affect me directly. Um, aside from my loyalty to my tribe, you know, my few friends that people can't play, but I don't play about, um, Outside of that, if if it's not affecting me directly, I probably don't know about it because my head be in the clouds. <laughs> how, how do, so how do you find your tribe? Because a lot of people, listen, I'm I'm all for clicks because I don't fuck with everybody. You feel me? Clicks are healthy. Tribalism has been going on for years, for centuries, for decades until since Adam and Eve. Goddamn it! Yeah. So I'm all I'm all for tribes. So how do you find your tribe or discover your tribe? Um, the people who are the most like me, but also had the qualities that I wish I had. Um, a lot of people want their tribe to be full of yes people. That never worked for me because I'm not a yes people. Those people to me are viewed as like, I'm not going to say dumb, but malleable, easy to manipulate those are your more go with the flow type of people and when you have too many of those in one setting who knows what kind of fuckery that you can get into or what kind of drama that you can get into because there's no way willing to say wait a second hold on y'all so i found people who were just like me but also had qualities that i wanted um people that i could learn from when it comes to my tribe i'm the newbie uh, and even though i'm the group owner there's a respect level that comes between all of us we we're all still willing to learn and develop from each other and that, i think that's what's important i don't want to be around people that can't add value to me or that i can't pour value into ladies and gentlemen she said geyser and Malibu. she's making my dick hard but so it's like finding your tribe it's like is it conversing with people to see it's like trying on shoes or trying on clothes so I would, and I was just talking about talking to one of my friends earlier at lunch about this. I approach finding friends the way that I would approach dating. They're literally the same. So we can hang out multiple times. We can have conversations multiple times. And at some point I've decided <laughs> if I want to just hang out with you for the turn up, cause I do have friends that I don't see unless it's time for the turn up and that's okay. That's just the the that's just where they are in my life but there but i also have the friends where when it if i left this lifestyle tomorrow i know i wouldn't lose them they would they would they would join me in whatever journey in life i chose you dif differentiate between friends associates and people you just cool with because you see them at parties a lot of people they don't know how to distinguish the three so how are you able to use discernment to distinguish the three because just because you know, friend is an action word. You feel me? Like everything is all good when everybody's laughing, giggling, smiling, drinking, smoking, and fucking. But that moment of truth is going to show you if you really got somebody in your corner. So how do you differentiate between the three? Um, honestly, when it when it it might sound a little shallow, but if we're not along the same level of success, if we didn't walk, if we can't walk in the same rooms together you're probably going to only be an associate because at some point I'm going to have to leave you behind. Listen, that's not shallow. That, listen, that's well, not gonna, shallow. I'm going to beg you to catch up or you'll be riding my coattails the whole way through. That's not shallow because nobody wants dead weight. You understand me? And nobody wants dead weight and, you know, water seeks to its own level. You understand me? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So that that is one, that's, that's one prerequisite of mine. Like if we're not on the same level, if if our lifestyles um are if, if they're vastly different when it comes to what we do when we go home when all this is over are you and i gonna still have commonalities because we can just be friends for the turn up like and some people are better off that way because for me i have more a little more of a superhero complex where if i place you on this pedestal i want you to stay there and, and if, in fact, something happens to where you just might have a human moment, for me, you drop down a few pegs. 
So I'm, I, I don't even want everybody to, to know that it's possible to get to that level. There are some people that I'll just hang out for the turn up. I'll see you at the next event, girl. This was fun. Yeah. But when you start calling me, asking me, like, come over and I come over and I realize, OK, this ain't this ain't really me. It's only so far we can go. Listen, I, I'm triggered now. I'm, I'm triggered because <laughs> it, it's like it, it's like people people have been putting me on a pedestal. It's like they have this ideal of me like I'm Superman. But the minute I'm Clark Kent, it's like they're disappointed. I'm like, yo, I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to fuck up. So that's that's the point of that's 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 the process of gaining wisdom and experience. Don't put yeah. me on the pedestal to the point where I disappoint you because yeah. I may I may do something that's out of character. But as long as I learn from it, then I'm good. But if you keep making the same mistakes, no, it's no longer a mistake. It's a habit. It's just a part of you. So I, I, I understand that because, you know, I was not allowed to make I was. I wasn't even allowed, allowed to make mistakes when I was younger. So that's why right. that kind of that's kind of transfer of how I deal with people kind of like you. It's like if that's I'm not allowed if I'm not allowed to make mistakes, you're not allowed to make mistakes, goddamn it. Exactly. So, so yeah. I, I I could relate to that because yeah. steel sharpens steel, iron sharpens iron. And, and and with that said, you have you have male friends. I've seen the pictures. I yes, pay attention. I do have male friends. One of one of my one of my closest friends in the lifestyle, who is also the admin for House of Cards, he is a man. So, how do you set boundaries with your male friends? It's like, you know, because I like just because I'm cool with you, like I'm cool with women who I don't want to fuck. I don't want to fuck, and they're highly sought after. They're attractive, but I just see them as my little sister. So, how do you find dudes who are genuinely in your corner? instead of them just wanting to fuck you even though you may have played with them how do you find guys who are who have your best interests at heart and they're looking out for you like being in a lifestyle where it's so sexually charged you spend time with them outside of sex that's the only way i'm not gonna know how you respect me <laughs> if every time we have an interaction my face is down and my ass is up I'm, I can't de I can't demand you to know what kind of respect I would even need. I can't demand that you know what kind of person I am if every time I see you, we're about to fuck or we're around sex. So my friend, my friend, uh, and his name is Marley. He's he's everything. Um, we've spent more time with each other outside of the lifestyle at this point than we have in the lifestyle. <laughs> So for me, I'm never going to question his loyalty to me. I'm never going to question how he feels about me. I'm never going to. I'm never going to question if I'm safe around him because I've. I, I, it's not our interactions aren't reduced to sexual interaction. So if you're if you're a woman and you're looking for a male friend in this lifestyle, it is possible to find that. But if every time that you're with this friend. You're at a lifestyle event. You're with lifestyle people. You're in hypersexual scenarios. You're never going to know who that person really is. That's the representative that we that we create when we go out in these places behind these this lingerie and these you know this ambiance and all of that. That's our representative. That's a part of us. You have to know who that person is outside of that. You got to take them outside of that scenario. Have you ever been put in the friend zone by a dude? Uh, listen, she she she's thinking, which means she's too sexy, um, too sexy to be friends. To, you know what I'm saying? You know what? It's so funny you asked that. There's one person that we we we've had plenty of you know physical interactions, but we're super close friends. And I don't know if I ever, if I ever said to him, like, what you, like, what you, you think we can do some outside of this? Like, you know, what about me and you? It's very possible he will, he might friends on me. Very possible. Oh, wow. Listen, when, when I've, also, I've also had guys hit on me who were my friends at one point and tried to be like, oh, you know, what are you, da, da, da. And I've been like, oh, I'm good, but we can be friends. And they're like, nah, nah, nah. Take care. It, it's, it's crazy because that's that's I've been friends on before, and 
when I was younger, I wanted no parts of you. It's like if I can't fuck, then why the fuck are we speaking? But as I <laughs> as as as, if I, as I've gotten older, you know, if she doesn't want to play with me or if she doesn't see me in that light, then she could be valuable valuable in other arenas in life. You feel me? So she 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 could probably put me onto her homegirls, or she could show me things like I write books and I podcast. She could help me promote my my brand, my platform. So if, if people really fuck with you outside of fucking, then that's genuine. You understand me? So if you find a person like that, that's why you have to be willing to invest time in them outside of the lifestyle. You're never gonna know if you don't try. So there, I do have guy friends that I've had to friend zone. One person thought that that meant I didn't fuck with them at all. They thought, oh, well, you must not like me. No, 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 no. I enjoy every time we spend together. You're a good time. We have a lot of laughs together. We take shots. We giggle. We, we play all kind of games together. I just can't see myself fucking with you. That's all. But you, but you wouldn't never know. You wouldn't be able to have those conversations. If you weren't willing to talk to those people outside of those events, outside of those scenarios, get to know people for who they really are. That's why I try to be an open book, because like you said, physically, it may not work, but who knows what else we can offer in each other's lives. Like, I'm never I'm never like no new friends type of person. That's you can always come to me and talk to me. Even if I say no on the sex, that doesn't mean that you have to walk away like somebody that just lost their best friend. It's not the end of the world to hear a no from me. <laughs> You're one of many. So how, how can how can I get out of the friend zone and into the end zone? Or is is that even possible? With me? Yes, with Shay J, with you, baby. Oh man, not you trying to hit on me during my interview. That's crazy. So how can I get out of? No, wait, 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 wait. Listen, I don't fuck all my interview. <laughs> I, I, I don't fuck every all the all uh, every every woman I interview. Of course okay? not. I'm just picking. I'm just picking. Um, I ain't gonna front. You know, I, I will love the sample uh, and chocolate, but that's not here nor there. So how can I get out of the friend zone into the end zone? You gotta, you gotta come see me. You gotta you gotta pull up to where I'm at. You know, I'm not that. I'm not. I reduce access in my free time because I wear a lot of hats even outside of the lifestyle but when it comes to like getting to find me i'm not hard to find i have an event coming up very soon a lot of the people that want to get to know me i tell them pull up see me in my element and you know get to know me have a drink with me have a meal with me play some games see my friends was, was there ever a time where, you know, a dude or even a chick, they started spazzing out, you know, kirking out because you you rejected their advances at a party? Like, they started, like, spazzing, like, snapping because they don't know how to handle rejection. I've never had anyone snap, but I have had people come up to me and tell me that they're upset. Or you were supposed to do this. Or we were supposed to do that. Like... Please realize when you meet me, I'm I'm super neurodivergent. My brain is like all over the place. Even if I'm sitting still having a conversation with you, my brain is racing at 100 miles an hour. There are so many other things I could be doing right now. So if you, if you lose sight of me or I don't see you, you might miss me. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that you lost out. It doesn't mean that you that I lied. It just means that we lost each other. You know, these events get busy and stuff. So I don't know. Put your best foot forward. And for me, one attractive thing is knowing how to take an L. Listen, listen, I, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I've taken my L's in a lifestyle. And at this point, I don't give a fuck. I, I look at it like this. She's missing out on a good time. On to the next one, like Jay-Z and Swiss Beats would say. So that's how I look at it. You feel me? Like, I love those who love me. And, and it, it, it's like... That's beautiful. I wonder if it came up on the camera. What'd you say? It was a ring that came out through the smoke. I wonder if it came up on the camera. That'd be cool. Hey, she, okay, 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 okay. She, um, not only she looks good, but what, what's your favorite drink? Mm, between a liquid marijuana and a tequila sunrise. 
Oh shit, you can make my tequila sunrise anytime. You know, what I'm like <laughs> so. It, it, it's, what made you start your own group? Um. And why well, did you Why did you name it the House of Cards? So, um, the group actually came about from a small event that I put together. Uh, shout out to PFN, very um, popular group in the seven five seven. I love them. Um, I was I'm a member of th- their group, and at the time they were having a big event that they had like you know put flyers out for way in advance. So people were coming from out of town and people that had never came to LS events before were coming to this one event that they were doing. Um, and I had decided to rent out an Airbnb and have a smoking spades night. So um, I hit up people that were in the chat that were supposed to be coming to the event like, hey, you know, if you're in the area, you want to get to meet some people, I'm going to put together a little, a little cars night for us. So that's the reason why I became House of Cards because the first event we ever did was a very intimate smoking spade night. Oh, that, that's what's up. So how do, you, how do you, how does it feel like having your own group as a newbie? Because a lot of, there's some shatter in a lifestyle that, you know, the newbies are not vetted and this, that, and the third, they fucking up the lifestyle. But I'm like, I'm like this, yo, not for nothing. But a lot of newbies, they're more level-headed than a lot of the vets. Like, not for nothing, a lot of the veterans are fucking shit up. But everybody want to point the finger at the newbies. You feel me? Because the newbies only have as much power or influence that you allow them to have. So, at the end of the day, it's, it's about the vets. You understand me? If they're not teaching you, then how do you expect them to act accordingly? You know what I'm saying? Under your toolage. Not that your followers... But it's like, if you blame me every, it, it's like the, it's kind of like the, this generation want to blame the next generation. It's like every generation want to blame the generation that comes after them. Instead of putting them to the side and say, look, this is how this is. This is how that is. So do you find it troublesome that veterans always want to blame the newbies? And do you think that the veterans are not really teaching the newbies, uh, like the ins and outs of the lifestyle? Okay. So your first question, uh, is it hard being a newbie having a group? Yeah. Um, It's not as hard as it could be. And that's only because I never claimed to know anything. And I never claimed to be anyone worth following. I never claimed to have all the answers. Um, But what what I do offer is my best, my best behavior, my best to my knowledge, when I go to these events, when I'm around these people who I've been in this lifestyle for decades, um, and I think that's what makes them enjoy me as a newbie, as someone who, because I'm a proud person, you know, I'm already a dominant personality, but I'm also willing to learn, and I'm willing to be corrected and held accountable, and I think that's one of the that's one of the things that's really important when it comes to owning a group, whether you're a veteran or a newbie. You know, I stumbled upon creating this group because there were people who were veterans who wanted to hang out with me. You know, it's something they saw in me, which I don't take for granted at all, because most people would say, you know, you're you're still baby in this. Why do you like this is quite the privilege, but it's and it's not one I don't take lightly, which is why I do surround myself with veterans. I'm the newbie in my group and I'm OK with that. I'm, I'm OK with that. Um but I, I, I have my own set of skills, my, my own set of knowledge. I absorb what I can. I offer what I can. Um, when it comes to the veterans in the lifestyle, um, yeah, it, it can get frustrating hearing, oh, we need to be vetted. There are people that need to be vetted. Um, because number one, like who's the king of the lifestyle? Who's the president of the lifestyle? What qualifications do you have to give a gold star to someone and say you are worthy? Because that scope can only be, it can't be much past what you know. It can't be much much past how you behave or what you think is right. And right is going to always be subjective. Um, 
So yes, it can get frustrating hearing that, um, especially when you realize that a lot of the people who are responsible for a lot of the issues and the lifestyle are the ones who think that they know everything. Yeah, it's like you got some nerve. It's like I, I never, I don't like shitting on the vet, on, on the newbies. I get at the vets because y'all should know better. You feel me? Like I, I, I would never get on. You know, you you know, there's a wise saying that says, "You could tell the tree by the fruit that it bears." You feel me? So behind it's like, every it, newbie it, is, is a veteran that co-signed them. Yes, it, 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 somebody co-signing this, whether good, bad, wrong, indifferent, whatever the case may be. Somebody's co-signing us. So that's why it's like nobody don't want to take responsibility and want to be held accountable for what they're allowing. And part of leadership is taking responsibility to take the helm. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like the hood. A, a lot of the street dudes, they want to blame the young cats. But if you're not guiding the young cats, right. if you're not right. mentoring them as OGs, as elders. When's the last what time the you talk to a young cat? Do you know how do, do you know what they're dealing with right now? Do you know? That's like, uh, you know, when the kids go to school and they have horrible behavior and they say, look at the parents. Yeah, you have to. Because what kind of what kind of space are they thriving in thinking that this behavior is OK? Exactly. And as a group owner, OK, you throw parties. First of all, talk about your party that's coming up in April. Oh, I'm super, super excited about our uh, our egg hunt. So we decided to put something together for the Easter weekend. We're going to have um, a, a egg hunt party, glow in the dark edition. So we're going to have all kind of glow sticks and party stuff. Um, we're going to have some really dope prizes. Um, we, me, as well as one of my other admin, we are 420 connoisseurs. You know, we're in the cannabis community. So we're definitely going to have some 420 prizes. We're going to have some adult prizes for our lifestyle members. Um, it should be a great time. I'm super excited. I've got um, a toy vendor that's going to come out. Uh, she's got a beautiful setup of all kinds of toys and lingeries available for everybody. I've got a great caterer that's going to be out there selling food as well. Um, and they're going to have infused options. So I'm super duper excited. Um, we've got a, a nice little spot. I, I can't wait for it. How did you build your team, your admin team? My admin team was based on um, one of my closest friends, um, another young lady who is younger than me, but she's been in the lifestyle for a long time, as well as another, as well as uh, two other veterans and an entertainer. One that's been you know, on the business side as well and knows what it takes to put together good events, knows what it takes to, to put, you know, things together. Um, Marley, my close friend, who's uh, one of my admins, he uh, has his own group and has been doing house parties and events for a long time. I was coming to his events before there was a house of cards. So I like to think I surrounded myself with people who all have different things to offer we're all, um, you know, there's a group age range, the youngest being 25, I think the oldest being 42. So, you know, there are people who who can attract all different kind of crowds. We can all offer something. We've got so many different events lined up for the rest of this year, um, especially the summer, that I'm super duper excited about. Um, yeah, my, my, my team is amazing, super amazing. And you, you, you show Marley love on your page. You know, you post the pictures. Time. Yeah, you, you showed him. You said all the time. All the time, as well as um, as well as April, Tasha, um, my girls. We we have a good time wherever we go, whatever we do. You know, um, some of us travel together as units. We at least try to travel by two or three when we go to events. So, you know, even outside of the house of cards, we love to come to people's events we love to show love show support you know we we stay we stay lit if i do say so myself so how do you develop a friendship with a with a man without it's being sexual because when, when i used to go on trips with my homegirl with my roadie people mm. would be shocked that we're not fucking it's like we could we could lay on each other naked 
and there's no sexual energy between us. It's like mm-hmm. when, when we went to Hito, they were like, "Oh, y'all not fucking?" We're like, no. It was like, it was like, we used to like that's how we got into the lifestyle. We came into the lifestyle together, but we're no longer on that sexual space. So how's like being having like a a, a, a male friend in the lifestyle? Like the dynamic, like the difference between a, a having female female friends and male female friends. Well, so me, I'm 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 gender fluid, and I'm also pansexual. Yeah, because so, I, I, I see I see you get that that rubber dick in you from you that strap on from one of the <laughs> chick. You know what I'm saying on your Twitter. We gonna get to that later, but I saw I that. Was with the rubber dick. Yes. So you was one with the rubber dick. Me. I thought you was the receiver. No. Oh wait, uh, no. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, yes. L- I listen, that. listen. Yes, I pay attention. All the clip. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes, I, I've been on your. I've been on your Twitter, and I was clutching my pearls. But we are gonna get to that <laughs> later. Anyway, keep going. Um. Yeah, I'm gender fluid. I don't really subscribe to the idea that I should treat somebody different than I would treat someone else based on their genitals. That's just if I don't have to have that conversation, I will not. So when it comes to my friend, my platonic friends in the lifestyle, we have a respect for each other. Um, I got to know Marley in in my first group. Uh, And in that group, people were pretty intimate. You know, we talked about all kinds of things. You know, to this day, I I come and spend time with some of those people and their children. So um, we we connected on a different level. We, We didn't have to see each other when it came to lifestyle parties he was somebody i genuinely wanted to hang around wanted to get to know um we're both in the cannabis community so you know we're always bouncing ideas and connections off of each other um he's from norfolk just like me you know we have a so we we know a lot of the the same people outside of the lifestyle so for me i just i I guess i got lucky you know i guess i got lucky (laughs) everybody's story isn't like that and we've never had sex. It's just a respect for each other. He's we've seen each other in different lights, of course. Um, but that never changes our respect for each other because it shouldn't. So let's talk about this Twitter. So what's the name of your Twitter, first of all? So people can check out what you twerking with. Oh. My Twitter is Shay J A Y. Um it's honestly just a little diary I keep. You know, I just I share little tidbits of the of the sexual side of me. Wait, wait, you got to say that again. It's Shay J what? Shay J J A Y. Okay, that the Shay C H A Y and J J A Y. Oh, it's two Y. No, it's J A. Hold on, Lord Jesus, I should know. I should know. But I just changed my name recently from um something else I used to go by. I think yeah. it's J A triple y see she she's been so digmatized that she don't even know how fucking handle you no, feel me honestly i because i need to be more active on that twitter i do need, I'm, I'm gonna be more active on that shit yeah, you, you act yo i love the balcony scene my old boy was hitting you from the back hey. in the balcony hey. that was hot what, what what um hotel was that my house <laughs> Oh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, she got a balcony. I thought that was a I fucking... Had a, yeah, yeah, I had a balcony. That's when I was in another city. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was in my house. Oh, shit. Oh, I, shit. Was, I lived on the top floor um, in a high rise. And our, our, our balconies were kind of angled in a way where you couldn't really pay attention to what was going on unless you were on a different floor. So, so what made you come out with a Twitter and an OnlyFans? Um... I've always been into the uh, the sensual side, <laughs> the nasty side of Twitter. I've, I've been a fan of OnlyFans for a long time. Um, and I think just the more I got comfortable with my own sexual- sexuality, which also was a part of me being comfortable with who I am as a person. Um, I don't know. I just felt like it was... Like, I think I want to leave a diary out here. I think people want to know. People would love to see. There were people that would reach out to me and, and ask for custom pictures and videos. And I didn't always feel comfortable. Um, it's like, I'm comfortable with me. And I, I was in a relationship with a partner who supported that at the time. So 
it wasn't it wasn't difficult my friend uh, in my regular friend groups i was always the nastiest friend anyway it wasn't so i was never worried about anyone judging me you know uh, again it was easy i got lucky <laughs> how did you how, so how did you find out about how did when did you become comfortable in your sexuality you know we go through a phase of trying to figure shit out like at what time in your life where you accepted yourself instead of acting like what you're doing is taboo or you being ashamed because society says that you should act like this in a certain way. When did you reach that eureka moment where you said, fuck that, I'm going to be me, YOLO? When my mother told me it didn't bother her. Oh, so um, she stumbled across your stuff? No, no. Um, I just started having conversations with my mom more and more about the type of person I was becoming. I came out to my mom three different times. Um, so she's had to roll with, with the punches. You know, I grew up in a very um, Christian household where- Oh yeah, yeah, she's in, she's in the South. You know, they don't right, care about right. that. Right. We're, we're in the Bible Belt here in Virginia, you know? So there were certain things that I was raised to believe were taboo, you know? But the more and more I felt like I wasn't being my true self, the more and more it got hard for me to be comfortable being around my family, my friends. It's like, you know, when you're holding a big secret from people and you don't know what their expectation is or what their response is gonna be, or you think that you know what it's gonna be, it's, it's difficult for you to get out of that place. But it came to a point where romantically, my feelings were evolving just as they were evolving sexually. You know, we have women who might you know, they might play around with women, but romantically, they're not into women. When that changed for me, and I realized, okay, I could see myself actually being with a woman. Um, when I came out to my mom as gender fluid, it, it, it got a little easier for me to say, you know, my mama don't hate, my mama still love me, you know? Because in the community, unfortunately, everyone doesn't have the privilege of continuing to receive the love and support from their parents when they do come out. So I was I was fortunate enough that I was able to get through my mom, um, and we have a good relationship now. So once once I learned that there was nothing I could say to her about who I wanted to be that would make her disappointed, forget what anyone else says. Fuck that. I don't care what anybody else says. My mama still love me. It, it was that ah, moment. Yeah, right? honestly, like because if I don't have anybody else, I got myself and i got my mama oh that, 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 that's what's up that's, that's what's up because it's, you know it, it's you want the people who you have respect for to accept you for who you are exactly you know and because if the person who gave me life was disappointed in their creation how could i walk around here being confident in myself and explain gender fluidity so and this isn't to you know, define it for anyone else because gender is a spectrum. Gender is a social construct that we created as humans that said, because your genitals are this, there's a list of behaviors that we expect you to have. You know, Scientifically, there's no basis for it. It's something we made up in our minds and we are born believing that that's what we should do. That's how we should be. For me, I rather not, I rather not my life be dictated by my vagina. Unfortunately, you know, with the laws changing the way that things are right now, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard as someone who has a vagina. <laughs> but um, for me, being gender fluid just means that I embrace my masculine energy just as much as my feminine energy. I acknowledge both as a part of me. Okay. So what do, do, do you deal with dudes who are vanilla? Yeah. So what do they think about your participation in the lifestyle? Um, right now I'm not I'm not really like regularly dating. So oh, okay, you know, she are you single? I am. Oh, oh shit. I'm very I'm much like, single. Oh, she yeah. said very much. She's so, not single. She's single single. She's not single. She's <laughs> single. Anyway, keep going. So, uh right now I'm not really living for anyone else's response or opinion when it comes to it. My my best case scenario will be that I found someone to settle down with in the lifestyle. Um, because I don't want to be with someone who I have to convince that what I do is okay. 
you know, I, I'm I, I'm in too deep now at this point. <laughs> it's like it's like you in a dope game. You went from selling ounces to grams to weight. You know what I'm saying? It's like you in too deep now, like the movie. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Exactly. You, that's no turning okay. back. So my 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 best case scenario is that I find someone that I would be willing to step away from the lifestyle for a little bit, a little bit to build a foundation, a solid foundation. But I would want someone that I can come back to this with. You know, be it a new dynamic, sure. You know, maybe maybe Shay can't play the way that I always did, but you know, I I, I don't see this being just a phase of my life so i want someone that could grow in this with me so this is who you are this is just not something that i do right so is there is there a difference between well there is a difference but is there a certain energy like the the perception is that in bdsm it's more educational than swinging swinging and just fucking with polyamory is more ethics with swinging and just fucking you mm -hmm. do other, correct me if I'm wrong. You do other into BDSM, polyamory, and swinging. Do you see that there's a, it's more discipline in BDSM and polyamory than swinging, or do you see that they're all the same, based on your experience? Huh. They're all the same. Because I, me personally, I've seen fuckery in all three. Yeah. Um, with great power comes response. Comes great responsibility. So whether you are a dom or you are someone who is the head of a polyamorous relationship or a polyandrous relationship, there's responsibility and there's a possibility for fuckery. There's always a possibility for fuckery everywhere you go. So um, there are people who claim to know it all and don't know anything, still have a lot to learn. There are people who misuse certain words or people who misuse their power and their privilege and position anywhere whenever there is authority or the lack thereof you, there's a possibility for for drama for disarray and that doesn't change because of the name that doesn't change because of the activities it's just depending on who the person is and how disciplined they are and how well they know themselves what is a misconception about say Shay J that you would like to clear up? Like they like some dudes may think like they may see your pictures and they may say, Well, I can't approach her because she may be stuck up, or the chicks may say, Oh, you know, she may think she's she may think she's better than everybody. You know that caddy shit. So what are some misconceptions that you would like to spell about you? Um Believe what the fuck you want. That, that, that that's what's up. There's there's a meme. <laughs> there's a there's a meme from um Woody Harrelson. From, he no, was in a uh, movie. It, it was it was it was a, a meme that says, um, somebody told him I heard about you, and his response was believe that shit. You feel yeah, me? Because I, um, <laughs> no, honestly, I am a firm believer in unless we're talking my moral compass. I want people, I want you to experience me for yourself the same way that I would want to experience you for myself. Unless it's one of my closest friends who knows that your behavior is something I just simply would tolerate, I'm going to get to know you for myself. So, you know, do that. Don't be scared. I'm not as, I'm not as uh, unapproachable as I seem. Like I said, I, I wear many hats. So for my safety, my sanity, I have to restrict my access when it comes to the lifestyle. And I'm not, you know, hosting or doing events or traveling. But it's not hard to keep up with me. It's not hard. What What do you expect to get? What do you expect to get out from the lifestyle? Um, honestly. What do I expect to get from the lifestyle? It's like you're in the lifestyle, so how how I, can how can the lifestyle enhance the person that you already are, or what what can how can it complement who you are as a person? Honestly, um, I still believe that there's somebody or somebody's out there for me, and being around the lifestyle, especially certain people in the lifestyle, is showing me what kind of person that I can have. It's showing me that I don't. I don't have to compromise when it comes to what I really want out of life. Um, I've been able to get a lot of great opportunities, meet a lot of people. Um, 
in this lifestyle. So it can be a community if you know how to navigate it. It's a it's an amazing community to be a part of. Uh, there are people who have been doing these these things together for years, and I'm just getting started. So I'm I'm excited to continue to learn, continue to grow, um, and who knows, you know, I might find me with somebody. No, that that shouldn't be hard because you sexy as fuck. You know, what I'm saying? You. I, yeah, but... I, I, I saw your your twerk videos, your ass shaking videos, and you know you know how to put yourself together. I love your outfits. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? I, I thought about doing a little bit of tricking and man, you're an outfit, so you could wear for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Yet. I don't and okay. And and you and what and so what are you saying? Well, I'm saying you better model that for me. You know, when we get into our little, you know, when we have our little rendezvous and I buy you a little something, something so you could model it for me. You know, we could go to the comedy club and you know, Virginia Beach at the funny bone or whatever the case may be, and then we take you out to dinner and have a nightcap, you know. And you just model your outfit and I model my outfit and we could be models together. Then one thing leads <laughs> to another, you know, give you a little full body massage, a back massage, a shoulder massage, a foot massage and sucking them toes and make you squish, squish, squish. Wow. Wow. You know, so, you know, a little bit of good conversation, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. a beautiful stereo. And I yeah. do like to, I definitely like to dress up, um, you know, the more I got come more comfortable with my gender and my fluidity, the more it became easier for me to buy certain things, wear certain things. Um, yeah, I, I, I saw that that leather outfit that you had, you know, a little issue with <laughs> in, you know. What was that about? You had like a leather outfit. What was the was the ass too fat for it or what, you know? Oh my gosh. The strappy this the harness set. Oh Lord. I I'm I'm looking at it now. <laughs> you know but 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 you know what um i i really underestimated how it would look on me versus how it would look on the model and you know straps can be adjustable and they all were unfortunately the, it wasn't adjustable enough. okay shit we, we gonna have to improvise god damn it you that's, know that's what we had to do um and then also i think the manufacturer didn't put it together right because my friend ended up having to um turn a couple of the buckles inside out and move it around so it could we could get certain straps in certain places it was stressful it took a whole two hours now i, I see you, you you had your bodyguards in the room you know what I'm <laughs> you had your bodyguards listen shay j got bodyguards you know what i'm saying you know there's all, yeah, listen there's always somebody who knows what's going on okay yeah, even if she, yeah she got bodyguards but so you know either people off with your endeavors and what you have planned for the house of cars and your twitter and your instagram this is for you to talk your shit so oh. listen there's no humble only slaves are humble so talk your shit so okay. shay j that's c-h-a-y j-a-y y y three <laughs> y's because you have to ask so many questions like why is why it's like you so much of a mystery that people gotta ask questions that's why there's why, three why, why? wives <laughs> like like, J like like jada kiss ain't got shit on you you feel that that <laughs> why you feel me why <laughs> Who, what, where, um, where, why yes so follow my twitter on at uh shay j that's shay j a triple y um you can connect with me on facebook uh, my Facebook page is Shay Loves You. That's L U V S Y O U, one word. Um, my group, um, House of Cards, we are on Facebook Messenger, but we are a very tight knit family. Um, you are able to connect with us at our events. We have a lot of events coming up. Um, the first one we have for this spring is going to be on April 7th. That's a Friday of Easter. We're going to have an egg hunt um glow party edition um it's 25 dollars per person we're gonna have uh food vendors toy vendors there's gonna also be a 420 um set up for you uh i'm super excited about that we have some things coming up this summer a few excursions and um hoc stays on the move 
So if you would like to connect with us outside of our events, we do travel and go to other events. We would love to be invited. We support whoever supports us. Um, you can follow my OnlyFans um, and become a subscriber. It's OnlyFans.com slash Shay J, the C-H-A-Y-J-A-Y. Yes, and you know when it comes to Shay J, I wasn't I wasn't lying about that. You know, buying you that outfit. You know, I would like to buy a vial. You know what I'm saying? In the wheel of fortune. You know, you you with the with the triple Y's, and I'm like Pat Sajak. You know, I would like that A E I O U and always Y. You feel me? Not sometimes <laughs> Y. It's always Y. I love that. I love that for me. You feel me? And on oh. that note, what'd you say, baby? That sounds good to me. Yeah, this feels good too. You know, do do do, do you want that experience? Well, now we have to talk about that. Oh, okay, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Anywho, <laughs> and on that note, so you see, uh, fellas, that's how your ass get out the friend zone. You know what I'm saying? You need charm and charisma. You so run back this episode so you can use this as an example of how to get your ass out the friend zone and into the end zone. <laughs> Ow. And on that note, this has been another episode of Swingers After Dark. And this is your host, Not Sun, baby. Check out my website at www.notsunblaze.com. That's www.nahsunblaze.com. And check out my ebook, Fuck. Yes, you heard right, Fuck. F U C K. It's on Nook, Kindle, Ibis, Google Play. Go get it. It'll make you say, uh, na 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 na. Ow. And shoot me an email at swingpodcast at gmail.com. That's swingpodcast at gmail.com. Hit me up with any questions or concerns that you may have. have, have. Rate, share, subscribe, and comment on this podcast. And on that note, until next time, peace.